to say thank you to the Polish um, guys that have made this available for us. Okay, hold a second, hold a second. I think, I think we need to learn to say thank you in Polish, don't we? So the way you say thank you in Polish is uh, dziękuję. Dziękuję. Can we say that all together when I count to three? And we can say it to the chef. One, two, three. Dziękuję. You are learning Polish so fast, isn't it nice? I would like to tell you that being here in Krakow is a very unique opportunity for us. I believe this is a special time for us. And um, I, I don't know if I can say this really, but I hope that you will only be in this classroom when you have to. Don't sit here when there are other things, when, when there are nothing on the schedule. Please go out, meet the Polish people. Wouldn't it be a disaster if we would just be with ourselves for the whole time? That would be a disaster. We would just bring, you know, our own little bubble and we would be in the bubble here in Krakow and then we'll go back again to our old bubble and we wouldn't see the, the people, we wouldn't see, you know, the city, anything. So right now we have on the, on the screen here, I, I would just to start with, help you find your way. So if you want to s take a look where to walk, this is where to walk to get to the old city. Now, the old city, it's like, uh, it's like a, a water drop upside down. It's kind of narrow towards the bottom here and wide at the top. And if you see, there is a park all around the green stuff and right here is a big square. You could aim for that big square. It's a good place to start. Now, if you want to go here, you just follow the blue dots. Basically, it's going out and that direction. And you won't miss it if you just go that direction. So, and here, it's very touristy as well, but it's a lot of nice places. But then if you go down, probably, oh, you can. If you go down here, this is where the Jewish quarter is, right here. And that's a place for very many good restaurants. And it w I mean, we had great food here tonight, but yeah. I would hate it for you to miss this opportunity. I have been here only two days, but I've been here two nights already in this area. So you, I recommend it highly. And, um, and if you go up a little bit again, if if so, yeah, this is good. If you like, you know, medieval times, and if you like museums and stuff like that, here is a big castle. Uh, no, I, it's right here somewhere, isn't it? Yeah, Vavelu. Ah, here it is. Thank you. Good eyes. Eagle eye reward for you. This is a big castle you can find. It's nice to walk around. I was there with the boys in our staff, on our staff, and we were looking at all the medieval weapons, you know, swords and spears and all sorts of weapons. You can do that if you like. And this is the old city walking up here. Can I, can you go down just a little bit? This is... Um, just a teaser for you, because you have to sacrifice to experience this. If you go, here is a big church. If you go inside that church, it's a beautiful church. And if you go to the service, you go for free. If you go to see, you have to pay. Uh, but right here on this big square, there is another church right here. It's a small white chapel. Every night at 6 o'clock, there is a classic concert. It's beautiful. It's very small. You won't fit all of us, maybe just 25 of us in it. And you have to fast dinner to be there. So it, it's going to cost you, not only for ticket, but for starvation, starvation as well, or whatever. So 
recommend it. Brilliant stuff. So enjoy the city. As we are gathered here, um, there is a word that has come to us several times. And it's, it's the fact that it's, it's not just about YWAM. It's about God's kingdom. I don't know if you ever have noticed that when, when Jesus started his ministry, it's, it says about Jesus that he was walking around proclaiming the good news, preaching the gospel. Have you ever considered what Jesus was preaching about when he was preaching the gospel? Was it the fact that he was going to die and then rise again? Die on the cross, isn't that the gospel? I don't think he was preaching that. It says he was preaching the good news of the kingdom. He was telling the gospel of the kingdom. And I think as we are gathered here for this time, I feel the Lord is, is you know, urging us to think about the kingdom. And what is it about the kingdom? Jesus says to his disciples, fear not, little flock, because it's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. When it says good pleasure, I think that's a word that's been said one other time in the Bible. And that's when John the Baptist is standing with Jesus and baptizing him, and the heaven opens, and God speaks from heaven, and he says, this is my son, in whom I am well pleased. That phrase, well pleased, is the same phrase as it's a good, it's a father's pleasure to give us the kingdom. In a way, you can conclude it like this. The same way the father loved Jesus, as much, and in the same way, he loves to give us the kingdom. What is the kingdom? We can't see it. I remember I was here in 91 and we were walking around singing heaven is in your heart with Bob Fitz. Remember that? But it's, it contains with people. But it's more than just people. Because when God's kingdom comes, it seems like everything is getting into right order. Things are changed into something that is brand new things that are broken are fixed and as jesus were walking around he was demonstrating the kingdom doing it by healing the sick raising the dead and doing all sorts of mir miracles because he wanted to give people an image a picture of what the kingdom is like and i believe that god is wanting to say to us that he will like us to have the kingdom. And that the kingdom will not just be among us, but it's the kingdom of God in Poland that we are so hungry to see come. But let's start with us. Maybe you are sitting here dreaming about seeing God's kingdom manifested in one area. One area of your ministry one area of your life, maybe it's at your base, maybe it's in your family, maybe it's in your mission field, if you're going on outreaches or somewhere else. Maybe you have that desire to see God's kingdom manifested. Maybe you are sitting here thinking, oh, I wish God's kingdom would manifest in my life, not just in my ministry, but I really need to see a breakthrough in my health, in my finances, I need that miracle of God right now. And I was wondering, maybe we can start this gathering here in Krakow by praying God's kingdom come. Can we do that? And so uh, let's just turn to one another in twos. And then you can say one thing, either a personal thing or in your ministry where you desire that God's kingdom will come. And you share it to that friend sitting next to you and then we agree together in prayer 
that God's kingdom come. Can we pray that? Just turn to your friends, share it briefly. It could be your private thing. Maybe there is a miracle that you need to see in your family, in your life, or something like that. Or maybe in your ministry. And then we agree together that we will pray, God, let your kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. On earth as it is in heaven. Let's share quickly and then we pray.
So Lord, we pray for our loved ones that is back home. We pray that your kingdom will come in their lives, in their midst, in our families as they are left back home. Lord, we pray for the ministry and the basis we represent. We pray that your kingdom will come. We pray that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we pray for this time here in Krakow, that your kingdom will come, that we will see it manifested. Lord, we pray that we will not need magnifying glasses to see your kingdom. Lord, we pray that we will not have to be trained in Bible college to be able to see your kingdom. Lord, we pray that your kingdom will be visible for everyone walking in the streets because you are here and your manifested presence and your kingdom has come. We pray this in your name. Amen. I was wondering, as we are talking about the kingdom of God, could we just have some people pray for, for Krakow and Poland that God's kingdom will come? If you could just pray out loud, just one or two or three or four of you. Can you do that? Pray out loud that God's kingdom will come here in Krakow. Jesus, we pray for the hundreds of thousands of young people that come to Krakow to find education, to find work or whatever. We pray that they will find your kingdom and they will bring it back to where they come from. Lord, and they will take it not only to this city, but they will take it to the nations of Europe as they are traveling so many places. Father, we pray, let your kingdom come to the young people of Krakow. Come, Holy Spirit. Let's continue and worship the Lord.
Yours is the kingdom. Yours.
I have a friend, his name is Ken. In moments like this, he, he usually is, expresses his gratitude toward the Lord, sort of like this. Mm. And, and I look at him and I think he's eating chocolate or something. But isn't it good to be in God's presence, worshiping him? The Pentecostals in Norway, the old Pentecostals, they would shout out an odd Abba when something is good. Have you ever heard that before in your church? Or maybe even a hallelujah. At one time it was very good to, to say it in Swedish in Norway. I don't know. It was a church that was very trend-setting. Uh, and so from Sweden. So we had to say hallelujah in Swedish.
be striked. What people are we striking? Now there's a lot of reasons for it. I don't, I don't want to go into that. What I want to talk about is that when that happens, hope. You can feel hope in this nation. And one of the things that was typical of almost all of the communist countries was when you were in it, you felt it was lifeless and hopeless. And when solidarity happened, suddenly there was hope. And I, I can't tell you what it was like. Nothing changed on the outside. They still had the same government. Everything was still as lousy economically, but there was something in the air. And it was called hope. And I, I remember traveling from Vienna right after Christmas. And I was riding in a train, and every and it was in the sleeping compartment, and every five minutes, it was about minus 20 outside, and every five minutes, the window would fall open. And it was not a very pleasant trip, I was by myself. When I got to Poland, I needed to have help. And I went to the Polish people, there at the train station, I would ask people for help, and they would go out of their way and take me to where I needed to be on the next train. And people talk about callings and things like that, I'll tell you, my heart got bound to these people. And that was my calling. But it was also being here in this time when you felt like you were riding on the knife's edge of history. You might not have been making it, or you didn't think you were doing it, but you felt like you were riding on the knife's edge of history. Because something was happening. There's a lot of background to it. One of the key things for it was this man named Karol Wojtyla, who would become the Pope. And during the time he was cardinal here, he, he invested tremendously in the academic life, in family life, he had an incredible vision, but he also gave himself to young people. I recently did finish with my study, I'm still kind of writing the corrections on it, but one of the things I was reading about was when Cardinal Wojtyla was elected Pope. Now this is the first time a Slavic Pope was ever, was ever elected. The previous pope had been pope for about six months, and then boom, he was gone. And John Paul II was elected. And there was a journalist I was reading, and he was talking about being in a taxi. And the news came on, and the journalist could kind of make out a little bit about what was going on. But all of a sudden, the taxi pulled over to the side of the road. And the man, the taxi driver, breaks down and weeps. Because he had hope. Something broke with his election. One year later, we came back to visit Krakow in Poland. There was hundreds of thousands of people that we meet everywhere. The government tried to stop people from coming to meet us, but they couldn't stop us. That field out there that you, if you want to go out there and see the largest green in Europe, it's 80 hectares. There was 2 million people out there. And even atheists said, I believe in God. <laughs> and even 
when martial law happened and they shut it down the strikes, the hope did not go away. People kept fighting. The Poles are fighters. They're, they're born to fight. And they've done that for a lot of years. When martial law happened, I think everybody expected their spirit is broken, but it wasn't broken. So, you know, here in Krakow, you come to a city that's got a lot of heritage. You walk out in the park, you walk by all the statues of people. Copernic was sport here. And there's a lot of other names I could give you. We all know about the Jews that were here. Half of the Jews that were killed by Hitler came from this nation. Three million. But how did so many Jews come here? Well, in the 14th century, when Western Europe was persecuting the Jews, the king of Poland said, we welcome you. You are, you are welcome to come and live amongst us. And so Poles or Jews came to territories all the, at that time Poland was one of the largest empires in Europe. And so they settled in Belarus and in Ukraine and all over Eastern and Central Europe. Because they were welcome. Now it wasn't like they always had a perfect record, but there was something that happened when the Jews were here. I hope you get the chance to go over to Kashmir's, the court, the Jewish quarter, because it's really come back to life again. There's no Jews there hardly, but it's just interesting to walk around and see, you know, houses with walls this thick. I mean, the, the Jews built them to last. Um, YWAM has been in Poland probably over 50 years, not permanently here, but Alan Carroll and the Akimov began traveling here in the late 60s and the early 70s. And then in the mid-70s, we as a movement came into contact with a very significant renewal movement that was taking place in the Catholic Church. It was called the Waza, or Life and Life. And we were invited by that movement to take on the role of leadership, training, and discipleship. We didn't have a lot of people. Because we had to just kind of think through how we're going to do this. And basically, the strategy God gave us was find, find the key worthy people and invest in them. Other people were doing the larger events and things. But God told us, invest in key people. And that's what we did. In the late 80s, Helen and I and the, another couple of the wallets moved here. And we began to do DTSs. Um, over time, you know, we, we just, there wasn't the strength to carry on with that. And in a lot of ways, you know, kind of, why do I have bread and butter is the DTS? If you don't have the DTS, it really doesn't go. And the DTS guy, you know, we stayed on, other people hung on here, but the work is basically just kind of in a holding pattern. But I, I really think God's gonna gonna hurt you here. And there's a there's something that We've imparted, there's a lot of uh, obedience that, uh, that people have given here that is seed waiting to come to fruit. And I guess if you're here, let's hear from God and see what He says about where we should be going and what He wants to do. You know, there's things hanging in the air that looks like the promising to come into being. But, you know, God's got to breathe with it. Yeah. Can I, I have no idea that 
that John has actually mentioned is good hope. And because during the worship time, I just really felt I would like to just kind of shortly share about one event which happened here about 25 years ago. And it has to do with hope. You know, we, uh, about, yeah, it was 25 years ago because I was pregnant with our first son, so I remember it so well. And we had the ship up north in Gdynia. And you know, it's just a time when Poland really started to open up. And you had more freedom to actually do something, to organize something as a well. And you have to be very careful beforehand what you spoke out, what you said, you know, how you, how you function. And we organized um, in the north of Poland a mission festival. And you know, at that time, those things were not really heard of, they weren't. And we had about 500 young people who came and attended this mission festival. And yeah, it, it was amazing. We had great teachers, but what we did is in the, in the afternoon, we sent those young people out to share the Lord, to share Jesus on the street. And most of these young people have never ever done that before because you really couldn't do it. You know, so they went out there and they, they shared the gospel, and in the evening they came back and they shared their stories. And I remember one evening when we had Bob Fix with us, who did worship with us, and one evening he created this song, I think it existed beforehand, but he kind of changed the words to Poland, and it's this song, you know, go to the north and the south, proclaim in the east and the west that Jesus is Lord. I think it was of the earth, but he then spoke out, Jesus is Lord over Poland. And, and that one evening, we were in this big hall together, all these 500 people together, young people, and we just felt we should stand up and walk to the north and walk to the south and walk to the east and walk to the west and proclaim that Jesus is Lord over Poland. And at that moment, when we did that, Amazing hope in this room. Yes, this is true. It's true. Jesus, you are Lord over Poland. And you know, as John mentioned, over these last years, it hasn't always been easy here in Poland. It really hasn't. We, in many ways, we went through the desert. We really did. But I just felt tonight that God calls us to enter the promised land and to claim this, this hope again. For Biden, Poland. And, you know, I, where is Erin? Erin somewhere? Yeah. <laughs> you know, in many ways, I think about three years ago, God started in a new way to really knit hearts together. I mean, that's how it starts. You know, He knits hearts together. And He started to give us vision again. And And we started to listen to God, hear Him speak to us. And there's just something new that is happening right now. It really, really is. And that you guys are here is really important. And we would like to take this week or ten days you're here together with you to hear from Him. To hear from Him what? and claim His hope again. And proclaim Jesus is Lord over Poland.
we need to do now is we need, need to know what to do, right? <laughs> Tonight, this is the last gathering. You should find your place to stay. Maybe you haven't found it yet. So you need to maybe walk around and find out where to stay. But tomorrow morning, we are meeting at 8.30, but not here. So, uh, uh, who can tell me where to go?